Benjamin Studios Publishing presents My Little Dashy by Rob Kanker and 53. Read for you by Stuart Heyman slash Benjamin Studios. Chapter 1 I live my life one day at a time. A good portion of those days are uneventful, always falling into the same routine. I wake up, walk to work, work, walk home, then bum around until I go to bed. Sometimes I'll hang with my few friends, while other times I'll just play video games or watch My Little Pony if Friendship is Magic. Every so often, something new and interesting happens. I meet an old friend, I find a dollar on the ground, or I get chased by a stray dog. Living in a dying city isn't very fun or interesting. The city was once full of color and life, but now, now most of the houses are sagging, the businesses sit empty and abandoned and several open fields lay barren of the once great factories that helped drive the economy. I never seen this city during those times in person, but I have seen pictures. My mother and father lived happily, and they could only wish the same for me growing up. Sadly, I cannot say I have achieved that wish of theirs. I fall into the same dull routine. Wake, work, sleep, repeat. I do have some moments of bliss, but the daily struggles I go through outweigh the small much of joy I have. My Little Pony has helped, but it's still just another thing to get my hopes up on. Every time I see the show, or one of the ponies on a fan site, I recoil a bit at the bright colors, the joyful faces of the ponies, and the peaceful scenery of their world. It's so hard to look at the beautiful world, having it so close to my grasp. I reach out to touch its warm colors and bright smelling faces of the ponies, only to be stopped by my computer screen. I snap back to reality. It gets to the point where I simply shut down my computer and walk away. I do that a lot, especially after my parents' death. I go for a walk. When I feel sad, I walk. When I feel tired, I walk. When I feel like walking, I walk. Walking has become my second life in a sense. I spend at least half my day outside along the crumbling sidewalks in decaying suburbs. I've seen people come and go, seen buildings torn down, burned up, or have so many graffiti on, the, on its walls that its original colors are, 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 are unrecognizable. I, I rarely, rarely pass any other people on my strolls. Most people don't like to look at their, at their once beautiful city, their homes, or former businesses. I don't blame them. In fact, I envy them. They saw this place with their own two eyes, seeing the buildings still standing tall and proud, the lawn freshly cut and paved, the, the, the paved roads, the sidewalks still intact. The only thing they ever seen close, that even comes close, is my mother's paintings. Each of them colorful scenes of this concrete world. She started painting once everything crumbled beneath her feet, making the sad scene before her look quite beautiful. Her masterpiece? There's an open field that yielded a parking garage. Over it, she drew an amazing rainbow. My favorite picture. I guess that is part of why I like Rainbow Dash the most out of all the other ponies. Her colors, the amazing sonic rainbow, all remind me of that picture. There have been times I wish I had my own Rainbow Dash, or more realistically, a plushie of her to crump in bed with. I made an old Simba into a temporary replacement until I am able to save enough money for one. It helps, in a way, like holding it close will heal my wounds, my pain, and my sorrow. My feet, after, my, after countless hours of walking in my old shoes, pulsate under the sheet. And all the while, I'll hold that such animal harder than a mother protecting her child. It's the only thing I can look at and feel true, and feel true joy, even if, even if it isn't the physically the rainbow dash I want. It'll have to do. Chapter 2 Today, as usual, I walked to work. It was the same shit, just a different day. Watching the same people enter the store, grab their merchandise and pay, then walk out with bags in tow. My shift ended after several hours of this. I clocked out and started walking home. I decided to use a different route this time for a change of pace. A little something different from the normal path I walk. This part of town was hit the worst. Only a few houses still stand, and them, none of them occupied. 
It truly is a sad sight to see. Then again, it's really the only sight I'll see. The only sight I'll ever see. Or so I thought. I was stopped by something unusual. A stray cardboard box in the middle of the sidewalk. Now, living in this kind of area, I see trash all the time. Boxes, McDonald's cups, and plastic bags litter the streets and empty fields. But rarely, why well, see a cardboard box that isn't crushed in one way or another? I noticed this particular box because it happened to be in my way. During my younger years, I tried to do what I could for the community. I pick up trash when I saw it, or I attempt to help my neighbors. It was a losing battle. Nowadays, I've given up any hope of cleaning the city, much less my neighborhood. Now, I'll just pass the trash by, and letting it blow away in the breeze, or sit there and decompose. I'll let what's left the people do of the people do their own big things, since most of them don't care about anyone but the, other than themselves. Why should I be any different? I walked past the box, barely getting a glance. Nothing about it caught my attention right away. I continued on, my home not far away now. Upon arriving, I sat down and played some vi and played some games, attempting to push the box out of my mind. I had a little luck, as the box somehow managed to push its way back in. Time crept on by, and I, and I soon found myself wanting to go for another walk. I left the house and started down my usual route when I stopped. What was it about that box that made me stick into my own mind? I turned around, starting the path I had taken to get home. The path I only walked once in a blue moon. Curiosity got the best of me, and I wanted some closure. Within minutes, I found it, still sitting there, sat and alone along the broken concrete and overgrown grass. It didn't move. It didn't stand out as if it were special. It was an ordinary brown cardboard box. I didn't want to say I came out here for nothing, so I walked closer to it. As I drew closer, however, I began to notice something inside. It was brightly colored, multiple colors in fact. It was quite small, maybe the size of a few month old Labrador puppy. I stopped beside the box and looked down at the colorful blob inside. This is where I currently stand, looking into the box at a small something. No, I know exactly where it is. My brain isn't allowing me to fully recognize it just yet. At first, I want to say it's simply a toy left to die along with all the other things in this block. But then I saw it breathing. In fact, it appears to be sleeping. My hands are sweating, my breath, my breathing erratic, and I'm blinking my eyes trying to refresh my vision. Each time, the image stays the same. Inside is a sleeping, filly, rainbow dash. I kneel down, trying to get a closer look into the box. I can't believe what I'm seeing. There is not a physical, mental, or extraterrestrial way how this could be here. How she could be here. In my gloomy, dark, and horrid world. I examine the box further, and on the side, a simple pen says, Give to a good home. The first thought that runs through my mind, besides the initial Philly Rainbow Dash in a box, is... Who would give up a Philly Rainbow Dash? My mind is now a mess of questions. How did she get here? Why is she here? Why is she a Philly? Her flank is even barren of her cutie mark, meaning that she is indeed a Philly. As I stand to stretch my tired legs, I accidentally bump the side of the box with my foot, and the inedible occurs. She wakes up. She looks around, rubbing her face with a foreleg, trying to wake herself up. At first, all she sees are the brown walls of the box, but then she looks up at me. Those large black eyes, along with the rose colored rim around them, drive my heart to, as the meme goes, explode twice. The sheer cuteness of it all drives me to kneel back down, and I can't hold back a smile. I haven't smelled like this in years. Since the last time me and my parents went out to, out to the only remaining park in the area, her eyes continue to stare at me, and I stare back. I don't know what to say or what to do, but I want to start somewhere. Hi there, I speak, but she doesn't respond. Uh, what are you doing out here? She looks around and back at me. The more I study her, the more I realize that she is really young. Years younger than her Philly appearance in the episode 23. She may not be able to talk yet. That is, if she's even talking in my world. The fact that she's even existing right now is, has me re really into confusion. I return my attention back to her and notice a small shiver of her body. The fall season is here and it can get pretty cold, especially around mid-September. I'm not sure how to exactly tackle this situation. And do I take her home? Do I call someone? 
Who would I even call? I'm a closet brony, so none of my friends know about my love of the show. I can't take her to a shelter. That's a stupid thought in the first place. Not only would it be a horrible sight, she might be taken off to some lab and experimented on or something. Just as equally as horrible. I have only one choice. She shakes once more as the cool air reaches her coat. Her wings ruffle as she lays back down and huddles her legs closer to keep her, to her body to keep warm. That's the final straw. I can't take it anymore. I take off my own jacket, reach down, and pick her up. I got the initial response I was expected. Fear. She begins to squirm around, unsure what I'm doing to her. She can't fly yet, but she still flutters her wings as if praying for a miracle to happen, that she just magically to take flight. I send her into my jacket, wrap her up so that her head is sticking out, and hold her in my arm. She continues to squirm, but then my body heat begins to finally seep through the thin jacket and she settles down. It's alright. Let's get you somewhere warmer, huh? I say. I smile again at her. She looks up, up to me with much confusion in her eyes as she tries to process what is happening. Don't worry. I'm not going to hurt you. It's getting late and you'll freeze out here. I think she understands me for after I say those words. Her eyes return to her normal size and she snuggles herself more comfortably inside my jacket. Scrunch a little, trying to get into a more comfortable position. I can feel her hugs and wings poking me as she shifts. Then, to top it off, she rests her chin onto my arm and lets out a deep sigh, closing her eyes to drift off to sleep. My heart explodes for a third time. The entire walk back, I keep an eye out for other people who can pass by me. I don't want anyone else to see her. I have no way of knowing how they would react. As usual, though, I don't see a single person. It's midnight by the time I get home. Fortunately for us both, I had turned on my porch light. Otherwise, I might have passed it. Being one of the few occupied homes in the block meant a lot of darkness. The city even stopped running power to streetlights, so that made it all, more, all the more difficult. I glanced down at Philly, who continued to sleep in the jacket as I carried her. She was no longer shivering and felt quite warm. I woke up to my porch, careful not to make too much noise as I get my keys out. Unlock the two deadbolts, the master lock, and finally the doorknob, and open my door. It is dark outside inside due to me leaving while it was still light out. With a flick of a switch, the single bulb in the hallway comes to life, shedding some light into the living room. Most of the furnace lights are my parents. Then again, so is the house. I became the owner of it after, after their passing and have done what I can to keep it that way. Still with the Philly rainbow dash in my arm, I walk into the, into the living room. As I pass my family portrait, I greet with a, Hello, Mom. Hello, Dad. I know they aren't there, but knowing that they love me and that I love them helps me stay, stay the same. And to keep going in my miserable life. As I enter the living room, I can feel starting in my arm. She had woken up, most likely when I turned on the light. And now, and now I was getting antsy, with no idea what to do or how to tackle the situation. I set her down on the couch. Immediately, she jumps out of the jacket and looks around, all right, investigating her surroundings. I continue to watch her as she explores on the couch, then continues to the, com to the coffee table. What are you doing here in my world? I say. I didn't mean to ask that out loud, but it just sort of happens every now and then. Only seeing my few friends once in a great while, I find myself talking to, well, myself a lot. I don't, I don't want a pet, because that just means more money to dish out and I'm already struggling as it is. For my question, the only response is another blank look on her face. That tells me she has no clue either. Then again, what else was what I expect from a filly that can't even talk yet? Are you lost? The moment the words left my mouth, her ears fall and she looks into the ground. Oh. Reali the realization strikes that she has no clue what is going on, where she is, who I am, or anything else. She is beyond the word lost. She is misplaced. Well... Until something happens, I guess you can stay with me. I see how she lifts her head up, ears starting to react once again, and looks at me with my with worry. My, er, my words don't sound that encouraging, so I throw on a smile as I speak. Don't worry. I'm sure whatever brought you here will fix itself in within time. We just gotta wait. Is, is, that, is, that, is that right? I'm not sure why I asked that, but it seems to do the trick. Her eyes perk up, up right up, and she smiles. The next few hours are spent giving her the grand tour of my house. Nothing amazing to see. 
and I avoid tucking her into my bedroom out of fear that the large amount of dirty clothes would swallow her up. Afterwards, I give her something to eat. I give up some small carrots, and amazingly, I discover that she has some teeth. She is still a fil- she is still a filly. I wasn't sure if she could eat solid food such as carrots yet. But then again, she is, for, she is from a cartoon, so I don't know what is correct for her anyway. Satisfied with the food, she finds a comfy spot in my father's recliner and sits. I don't mind, it's not like I sit in it. It was- I was never allowed to when he was alive, so why would that change even after his passing? It's his chair, but I'm not going to be, to be mean to the filly for not knowing that. So I let her sit where she is most comfortable. I also give her a small blanket to wrap herself in. Due to my house's current temperature, it's not as cold as it is outside. My furnace has had problems since before my parents' passing. There was a trick to fixing it, but that died along with my father. I must have fallen asleep at some point. I honestly expected myself to be wide awake due to such an interesting event. But after the long hours of work and staying up to take Patera Dash, my body had other plans. I'm not so sure how long I was out before I woke. But it doesn't matter. As I close my eyes, I feel something against my side. I look, and sleeping beside me is the small cyan filly, her rainbow mane and tall and tail still, her head resting in the, in the inside my elbow. I know the meme gets old, but I must say it. My heart exploded again. Lying there, sleeping and curled up beside me, he had me smiling ear to ear. Her gentle breathes and are barely heard. The hairs on her mane tickle my arm, but I hold back any movement itch. The warmth of her body against my stomach warms an already weak heart. Though a few months isn't a long time, it's how long I've waited a moment like this. My own little pony, a Rainbow Dash plushie to sleep with and hold tight. And now I have a real Rainbow Dash, a filly, sleeping at my side, content as though she has known me since birth. Right now, there's nothing else that matters to me. My despair, my sore feet, and painful heart all go unnoticed as nothing can come remotely close to the feeling I have right now. This joy I'm experiencing as this moment as I lay awake on my couch. She is here. She is real. Right now, she is my little pony. She is my little dashy. Chapter 3 It's been only four months since I brought the young Rainbow Dash into my home. I've done what little research I could on the matter, but I've come to no conclusions. I have no idea why she's here, and quite frankly, I don't even care anymore. These few months with her have been the most amazing time of my life. She has opened my heart to, up to love and joy, among other things. Right now, she sits next to me as the couch as I watch television. She seems to enjoy the morning cartoons on the local stations, and myself, and I myself have come to enjoy them too. She acts like a, much of a young, like a young child would. Then again, but wouldn't she? Another amazing feat is that she's been learning to talk. I'm not much of a teacher, or for that matter, a parent. But I am doing my best to help her learn to speak and read. I don't know how or even where to begin to attempt to her to teach her right from the show they do with her mouths, but I will let it go for now. When she is a little older, if I can even have her for that long, I will do what I can to teach her. Chapter 4 I used to be that a year would go by. I used to be. I used to, it used to be that a year would go by slowly. I would look forward to the new year in hopes of getting a fresh start. Now, though, I feel like as if the year this year went by a little too quickly for me. I decided, since I had no knowledge of her actual birth date, to make the day I, took, I found her her birthday, September seventeenth. Oddly enough, that's the very same date the second season of My Little Pony: Friendship Is Magic aired last year. I kept watching the show after Dashie came to my life. There was no reason for me to continue. And honestly, I don't have a bunch of much time to myself anymore. It would be hard to hide from me actually watching the show. Even harder to explain the situation if you ever were to see it. 
especially at her current age. She knew that her name was Rainbow Dash, but I had come to call her Pinky's pet name was Dashy, and she has no problem with it. She can fully communicate with me now, as well as reading English, and she's even started to learn how to write with, you guessed it, her mouth. I tried to invent some devices for her hoof so she could write, but it seems writing with her mouth is more natural than moving your hoof around. One thing that now troubles me with her right now, every day she sits, she sits at, the, at a window looking outside. I'm not worried about her being, being seen by passerbys. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a dead out on the street, so that's the least of my worries. Still, though, she doesn't say anything to me yet. I can still see the hunger for fresh air in her eyes. I can't keep her in here for my entire life. <laughs> I keep telling and talking like she's gonna be here forever. I know that isn't true. One day, someday, she'll return home. Whether it'll be a simple poof and she gone and she's gone, or through some magical spell and Twilight shows up and takes her home to fix everything. In my heart, I hope that never happens. In my head, I know it will. It's just a matter of when. I do hope to get her outside soon. I've been checking out some of the abandoned lots and former parks on my walks and to and from work. Seeing where the best location would be to take her. Oddly enough, it seems the park I had played at growing up is the best option. That should be it then. I'll just take her to the park. How am I gear there? She's relatively small, so she can be hidden inside a jacket or something. Tomorrow is supposed to be a nice day anyway. Chapter 5 She did it! After two years in my care, and having absolutely no knowledge of flight myself, I helped her learn to fly. She's gotten quite big in only, only a couple of years, and it was getting harder to hide her when we walked to the park. I got so desperate to keep her hidden, I bought a dog costume for her to put on so she could walk there unnoticed. She was not happy! So I got some books from the library and read up on teaching birds to fly. I would have looked on the internet, but I fear she would have become curious of herself. There are, there are a lot of horrors on the internet, and she's not ready for it. In hindsight, it's bad enough that she's experiencing television, but she just kind of doesn't enjoy Spongebob and NASCAR too much for me and take it away from her. Back to flying. I've been taking her to that old park for weeks, and hoping I can teach her how to learn how to fly. There's a large tree there with branches sticking out of over a sandbox. The perfect spot for her to practice. If she falls, and I can't catch her, at least she'll have something remotely soft to land on. She fell a lot. I knew she would fall a lot. There were many scrapes, cuts, and bruises toward her goal. But finally, after many works of work, she flew. It was only a short distance, about 50 feet, but still she did it. She's a little scraped up, but she's beaming with pride. Maybe now that she can fly overhead so that she can so the few people on the ground don't notice her. I'll have to see if she can manipulate clouds like she could in the show. It would make it much easier for her to take her places. Then she can hide as a cloud and go to the park. Another thing that has been brought to my attention, she asked me about having her own room. And I got thinking, and realized the house does have a spare bedroom. Though my parents had filled it with many of my school stuff and some of my old toys in my younger years. She may enjoy them. Though she is getting older, I'm not sure how entertaining they'll be for her. If she has her own room, I can get her her own things so that she can feel somewhat normal. She's pretty smart for Philly and knows about the difference between our species. But she knows nothing about her moral origin still. She's not ready yet. The only thing I can do is keep her happy. I only wish I could I had a way to buy her the things she wants. Chapter 6 If you told me four years ago that I'd be taking care of a cartoon rainbow-colored pony, I'd call you insane. I probably am in all reality, but I don't care. I'm happy. She's happy. Today is the day for celebration. For today, my little dashie got her cutie mark. 
I honestly didn't know how to tackle that fact. She didn't know even know what it was until I explained it to her. Now she's even more ecstatic than before. It was a normal park outing, but this time we just, she decided she wanted to see how high she could get. I had limited her on, on to how high she could fly, but honestly, I can't do anything about what she does up there. I can't fly, so the most I can do is tell her to be careful. Somewhere, <coughs> somewhere she got in her head to see just how fast she could fly, probably due to her being a NASCAR and, well, a general racing fan. For some time, she was trying to make up, make up trips and stunts of her own, giving them names. I just sit on a bench and I fixed up and cheer her on. No one was ever around anymore. In fact, on that block, I think the last person left over a year ago. There are rumors the entire area is going to be bought by out some, some company, however. And all this turned into a large manufacturing area. I don't know how I feel about that, but that's important right now. Right now, I have so overcome with joy that my dashie now knows her place. Granted, this isn't her world. She is still the same Rainbow Dash from the show. Regardless of how I raised her, she has that same spunk and attitude from the show. And now, she has her cutie mark. Anyway, she climbed to quite a height in an attempt to gain speed from a fall. Well, all the right things factored from her. How she resisted herself, her mental, her mental focus, and possibly me on the ground watching and cheering her on. But she did it. She broke the sound barrier and created a sonic rain boom overhead. Now, I didn't even imagine it was possible to accomplish such a feat in my world. I knew you could break the sound barrier, but to actually do the rainbow part too? My mind is blown! So, the initial explosion bro brought up upon many broken windows and set off car alarms in the next county. I quickly rounded, rounded her up and we rushed home before anyone could arrive at the park. I was lucky none of my windows were broken. The rest of the day was spent celebrating. It just so happened that today was her fourth birthday. I have no way of knowing how old she actually was when I got her, so I just started over. I would have I would have bought a cake, but due to the boom, all businesses were closed and needed new windows. So we made a cake on our own. Apparently the the fan fiction writers got it right. She can't bake at all. Granted, I'm not the best myself, but it was still a mess. But we had fun. She enjoyed herself, and she is happy. Therefore, I am happy. Though that was her highlight of the day, mine was just moments ago. She hasn't come ac accused me of sleeping in her own room versus me with, versus with me on the couch. Actually, stop. I actually stopped sleeping in my own room and kept her company in the living room until now, until recently. Now I can sleep in my own bed once more. But I keep my door unlocked, so if she needs me, she can come get me. I just tucked her into bed and told her. Goodbye when she said it. Good night when she said it. Good night, Daddy. I love you. I actually I haven't been on the internet in what three years now. I don't know how the My Little Pony thing that's online is doing, or what memes are still alive or not. But damn it all, I'm gonna say it because it's true. My heart exploded twice. For the first time, not only did she call me Daddy, which she has done on occasion, but she even said. I love you. For a moment, I didn't know what to say or what to do. I'd never been in this sort of situation before, but I remember what my mother and father used to do. So, I leaned down and kissed her on the forehead and told her the same thing. Good night, Milo Dashi. I love you too. She smiled at me, then closed her eyes to sleep. I walked out, turned off her light, making sure her SpongeBob netlay was on, of course, closed her door, then sat down on the couch. I haven't moved for an hour now. I am so lost in thought. The few times she has called me daddy, I didn't think of any of it. I can picture why she called me that. Being with her so much made me accept it as being a part of taking care of her. But tonight when she said those three words, the realization finally sunk into her, into her into heart. I am her daddy. She considers me her daddy. And quite frankly, I consider her my daughter. Even though we are a totally different species, I still love her with all my heart. And it's taking her to speak those words to me to finally realize that. I think I've finally done it. I have broken my hard shell that I formed when my, parent, when my parents died. I've let a sweet little filly into my life. I gave her a home to live in, food to eat, and now a daddy to love. She's given me hope, love, compassion, and now something I thought I'd never utter. A daughter. 
I still speculate when the time is going to arise when she comes back to Equestria, and each day it gets harder for me to imagine what, when it actually happens. I just hope that, that she never forgets me, because I will never forget her. Chapter 7 I believe Dashi is now at her full size. Rounding in about three feet tall, she is fully grown. Though she is still only ten years old, according to my math, I believe she is actually more than one than the lines of fourteen or fifteen, possibly in actually years. So we celebrated five missed birthdays and actually moving in, in an officially moving day. That's right, moving day. We moved from my parents' house. Thanks to me finally saving up enough money. Plus, getting lucky at a casino. We bought a nice house a hundred miles away from the city. It's got a lot of open land. There's not is another house within five miles, and it's just me and her. Now she can fly around all she wants, whenever she wants. She is truly happy, though. She does miss the old park. It's gone now, along with anything else left in the area. A large business bought all the land up, flattened it, and built a large factory there. It was an amazing boon to the economy, and people are starting to build homes again. I'm glad, but it just wasn't for us. The, that amount of people would, would hinder her for going out, her going outside, and I'm not going to force her to stay inside it all day unless it's raining out. I got a new job, one that pays much more than my old one. Dashy even talked about getting a job, but then I just remembered what I told her. The look on her face was heartbreaking. We were enjoying a cake we made. Which I must add, we have improved upon that skill. When she brought it up, I jokingly said that she can't do, she can't do to her being a pony, and I laughed. She remained silent. My, my God, I'm horrible. I, I just laugh because my daughter is different. I apologize for hours, and even though she is, she, she says she understands. I know she is still hurt. Luckily, I have a way to fix this. Due to the sheer size of the property, it involves a lot of cutting of grass. Tomorrow, I'll modify a lawnmower for her to use. So that she can have a job. I'll even pay her so she can get her buy her own stuff if she wants. Though I'll have to get it for her, she can still actually say she worked for something. According to the show, she was, she was a weather pony. And I don't have her mess with mother nature unless it's a dire emergency. So there isn't really any job to be had there. I still can't believe I had her for 10 years now. My god, time goes so fast. I wish it would slow down. So that time, I, that way I could have more time with her. I don't know when, but I have the sudden feeling our time together is running out. All of this has been too good to be true. Chapter 8 Today has to have been the worst time of my life, even more than when my parents died. Due to events I could not prepare for, Dashie found out the truth before I could tell her myself. She knows what she is, a made-up cartoon character from a kid's television show. She is mad, no, upset beyond all thought. She, has, she had locked herself in a room. But I know my daughter. She didn't stay there long. She opened her window and flew off, probably into a tree to sulk in her sorrow. I'm a monster. I should have told her sooner. I just wasn't sure when we could be the right time. Now we are both suffering from my carelessness. I thought getting Kim would be a good thing to give her more shows to watch. But what I didn't realize what was that we got the hub station. I wasn't even aware that it was still up. And found my surprise that my little pony was still even airing. It had stopped at eight seasons, but still was repeated. I remember I walked in from work with some groceries, set them into the kitchen, and walked into the living room. That's when I saw it. Yay, yeah, she did it! Flourish, I had screamed, jumping with joyous Applejack, Troy, and Pinkie Pie all sat on the clouds with dumbfounded looks on their faces. My heart sank. I knew about this episode. I remember this episode. Even after I seen nothing for for 12 years, I still remember that damn episode. In that episode, 
Rainbow Dash performs a Sonic Rainbow, much like my little Dashy did all my all the years ago. At the time, I was still holding my keys, and I dropped them. If they clanged on the wood floor, and if she didn't know I was home before, she knew now. How long? Dashy asked me, no emotion in her voice. I, how long have you known about this? I, Dashy turned to look at me. She had been crying, and her mane was in even worse shape than normal. How long have you known about this? I couldn't help it. A tear ran down my cheek as she yelled at me. This was the first time in all these years she had raised her voice at me, and I deserved every bit of it. So I sat down, turned off the television, and told her everything. I told her about the show, about finding her, and answered her any other questions she had for me. There were a lot. Most of them steamed from the show, to which I simply told her what I truly believed. Though she is the Rainbow Dash from the show, she herself is a different pony from this girl from the cartoon. I tried to explain it to her, but her bullheadedness took over and as she continued to lash at me. I took it all. I deserved it all. I've been keeping that horrible secret from her for far too long. She's now a fully grown man, or capable of taking care of herself if she were in the Equestria. Here, I cheer like she was still my little filly. It's been wrong of me, but I couldn't help it. I didn't want this to ever happen, but I knew it would. I should have done what was right, but I didn't. It was only a matter of time before she found out, and she knew she was different. After our argument, she flew upstairs into her bedroom and slammed her door shut. I checked on her an hour later, but no response told me that she had flown off. I can only hope that she comes back. At least if she doesn't, she stays away from any other people. If anything, I hope it helps until her portal opens up and she goes back to her world. It never has to be ever again. All I can say to her at this point is that I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. Chapter 9 It's been three days since Dashie left. Then at her departure, I did something I hadn't done in a long time. I went for a walk. I wasn't sure where I was going or how long I walked, but that's what I did. I walked. Now, three days later, I'm finding myself out here walking once again. I've been out for roughly three hours, and though it is only five in the afternoon, it has grown dark. A storm is brewing, and soon... I'll be, getting, I'll be getting hit by the brunt of it. I turn around to begin my walk home, though I don't rush. My energy for these past few days has been non-existent, as I barely eat anything more than just some toast. I feel so lost as I walk through the woods that surround my home. No, our home it is as, as much as hers as is mine, and nothing will change that. The rain has begun, but I do not quicken my pace. I just walk. Much like I had done so long ago. The distant memories of all my pain and sorrow before Dashie began to seep that back into my mind. I hadn't had all these thoughts in years. The pats of water on the tree leaves keep me distracted. It's a peaceful sound, once you never, when, one you will never hear in the city. The rain is picking up as my shirt is now soaking wet. I'm sure I'll be sick tomorrow morning, but I don't care. I've been sick for three days now. A mental illness that has been tearing me apart. My daughter is somewhere out here, hurting, needing some comfort and more from this rain. I wish I could be there for her, even though she may not want me to. She may not ever want to see me again from how she acted. I don't blame her. It must be such a horrible thing finding out about your past like that. I can't even imagine what it would be like. I know Dashy is a strong mare, and she can put through, and she can pull through. But I also know how she holds a grudge at times. I'm not sure that even if she did come back, she'd ever forgive me. Or more importantly, if I could even forgive myself. It's now pouring out here. The tree companies are barely holding back the tutorial rain as I hammered as I'm hammered by the water droplets. I stop to look around and for my variants to return home. I'm not lost. Most of the, this area is easier to traverse once you get used to it. It's just I'm looking for Dashy as I walk. That's the reason why I'm walking in the first place in this forest. 
I press on, keeping a steady pace through this rain. Suddenly, I spy a large, thick tree, its stature sticks amongst the rest. And, for, and from the looking at the barely wet grass, underneath I can tell its many branches are holding back from the, even this hard rain. I need to take a break. So I walk under the tree and sit down. The grass is barely wet, with only a few small droplets making their ways down. This is the kind of tree I imagined Dash would hide under in this rain. I wish it to be true, but I saw no sign of her as I approached. I close my eyes and lean against the tree hulk as I think about my life. Our life, together as a father and daughter. We have grown so much as a family, and have been fortunate enough to have very few fights. None of them were as heartbreaking as the one three days ago. I fear a tear running down my cheeks as I imagine Dashie's face again. The anger in her eyes mixed with the confusion just tears me apart. I want so badly to make things right, or go back in time to stop it from happening, but I can't do either of those. What's done is done. I'm so sorry. I speak out loud, not caring for no one is listening. I'm alone in these woods, besides the wildlife. In this rain, they're hiding as well. And the ones that aren't are, are far from a being as such as I. <clears throat> I'm just so sorry, Dashy. I continue to cry as I keep my eyes closed and lean against the tree. The rain continues to pour around me, and a occasional drop hits my head, but I don't care. Up my eyes from the sudden sound. I look to my left. I'm shocked at what I see before me, looking at me with teary eyes herself. Dashy. My little Dashy. Covered in burrs and tree sap along her mane and tail. She is standing a couple feet from me. She is wet with both rain and tears. I hadn't heard her approach. Then again, being a Pegasus, she is very quiet and light on, on her hooves. <coughs> she doesn't speak and instead walks over to me, not caring for what noises she makes under her hooves. I don't move. I just sit on the ground and watch my with my own wet eyes. She looks so horrible and yet so beautiful at the same time. Her coat would need a good cleaning, but that was at least my worries. Without a word, she sits next to me. Not making eye contact because she looks off into the woods. <coughs> I can barely look at her, wishing to hug her tightly and never let go of her again. But I held back, knowing that none of that if it would be too sudden. Finally, she is the first to speak. I... I heard you. Her voice then got quiet, she whispered. And I'm sorry, too. I simply smiled through my tears. Her stubborn attitude was still showing as she always had difficulties apologizing. Dashy. You have nothing to be sorry about. <coughs> this is my fault. Simple as that. It seems my point doesn't get across as she finally looks at me with a sorrowful face. Dad? Do... Do you still love me? Now is the time to act. I reach over and grab her, holding her a tight hug. Of course, Dashy. I've always loved you. I still love you no matter what. Not even a small fight such as ours could ever change that. She just turns the hug as we sit there and cry together. We continue to apologize, me for the truth, and her for raising her voice and storming out. After some time, the rain subsides and we remain under the tree. Dad? Hmm? Can we go home now? I need a shower. Bad. I let out a chuckle, and she too laughs as I stand. I make her trip back home. She is smiling again. I am too. I've been giving it some thought, and I think I should give her her birthday present a little early. A ticket to the Indy 500. Yes, I'm taking her to the Indy 500. She can simply sit on some clouds and watch while I'm on the stands. I didn't even have a little, like, to give her a ticket, but she needs some sort of reminder of her visit. I'm sure she'll have a blast, and though I didn't, I don't expect this to make everything right, I can only hope that it cheers her up some. With some time, I'm sure she will relax and settle down about her being in the cartoon. She is a smart mare, and knows that she's real, not that made-up pony from the cartoon. I can only help push to her to believe that, and hope she does the same to me.
Chapter 9. There's a point in every parent's life when they act to let their child go, whether it be for the better or for the worst. It must happen in some point. I now sit here in my living room by myself, sulking over photographs of my distant memories of me and Dashi. On her 20th birthday, I had planned a special outing to go see a flight show. As we prepared to leave, there was a knocking on the door. Never in the years we have lived here there had anyone knocked at the door. Hell, we hadn't even made arrangements if someone did show up. I simply told her to go to her room while I took care of it. Once I heard her door shut, calmly and collectively I asked who it was knocking, expecting some stranger possibly lost in his or her travels. A female voice spoke in an elegant, elegant yet attention-grabbing tone. I felt myself listening to her with the most utmost attention. She asked if she may come in, a question I normally refuse to know with a heartbeat, and yet something about her voice was, was, was immense. I couldn't help but walk over and open the door. When I first saw this figure standing on my porch, I wasn't sure if I was dreaming or her, her hallucinating. Standing there was the radiant and majestic Princess Celestia. I was at a loss of words, fighting both emotions of brony excitement, which I have only felt when I first found Dashi, and emotions of sorrow for what I knew what this meant. She stood there for another second looking at me. We matched each other in eye level, her body being the size of a nearly full grown horse. I stepped back and allowed her to enter. What caught me off guard next was the five other ponies that followed suit. First, Twilight Sparkle, then the rest of the gang. Applejack, Rarity, Flourish Eye, and lastly Pinkie Pie bounced in. Ooh, so this is what an alien house looks like on the inside. Oh my, you have a kitchen! I'm starving! Are you starving? I can make us some... She was stuck at Applejack's hoof. Easy there, Sugar Cube. We're just here for rainbows. We ain't got any time for any eating. Applejack's stomach growled. No matter how hungry we are. I still wasn't sure how to completely react to all this, but not wanting to, to be rude, I offered some leftovers. Uh, we do have some leftovers from dinner last night. You're more than welcome to have some. Pinky took that as an okay and ran to the kitchen with much vigor. It seemed I did not even need to tell her where everything, everything was. She instantly knew where, where everything was placed. Fact for it to be either dumb luck or to simply being Pinkie Pie. I chose the latter. I'll go keep an eye on her, Jab Applejack said, walking to join the Haber Pony. As she passed, she tipped, she tipped her hat to me. I, I was finding it odd the ponies were not hesitant around the creatures such as me. Then again, the same thing could be said for myself. But having Dashie for 15 years, I grew used to having such a thing around me. Now, I, only, I have five, five other ponies and a full-size goddess horse looking at me with the same amount of curiosity that I had for them. There was a moment of silence as I watched the two mares enter my enter my kitchen and begin to rummage through my fridge. I am quite surprised, Celestia began. I expected a more resistance to us entering. Why? I know who you all are. Celestia nodded. Ah, so you do know then. If you're that you're a fictional character from our children's TV show, then yes. Otherwise, while you're all here, I have no clue. The last part I lied, hoping to keep my mind at ease. I knew the reason, but I wanted to ignore it. Oh, I think you do know. My heart fell into the pit of my stomach. I did know. He was straight to the point about it. During all these years, I anticipated this moment. But as time drug on, that th th that slowly di dispelled until it was not just nothing more than a minor nip in my mind. That's when it always happens, you know? When everything is finally perfect and you don't want to worry anymore. Um, excuse me, sir. Ty began. But when, from what we can figure out, Rainbow Dash should be here. Is she? I looked at the purple mare, wanted to tell her no, but I knew it was fruitless. She's upstairs in her room. In her room? Rarity asked, surprised. <clears throat> yes, Dash is in her room. I wasn't sure who was knocking and didn't want her to be spotted. Dashie? <laughs> my, my. Is that friendly of her already? Rarity continued. I wanted to punch that pony so hard right then, how she responded insulted me. Friendly? That's only the beginning of it. Now I should be asking you ponies as to what the hell you did. Celestia raised a brow, taken back by the change of tone. 
You see, my student, I know who she is. Would you just cut to the chase? I was very short with her, as serious as I was. I wanted to know why they sent Dashie as a filly to some other world. Twilight bit her lip as her teacher continued. Yes, of course. Ahem. <clears throat> She was working on a spell to help the weather team with some storm development. Well, they made slightly a, too large of a storm. And when Twilight used her magic to try and dispel it, it shot a lightning bolt, meaning her magic. Limbo Dash was unfortunate enough to be within the reach of the blast and engulfed her. And sent her to, well, to here. So we are here to retrieve her. Simple enough, I imagine. Before I could answer, Dashie called from her bedroom. Dad? Is everything all right? I, that so, that second, my heart start my heart stopped beating as I looked from pony to pony. Each one's face was in pure shock and confusion. They recognized the voice of their Rainbow Dash, but she said, "Dad." Uh, excuse me, Sugar Cube. Applejack started re returning from the kitchen. Did I just hear Rainbow call you Dad? Before I can answer, Celestia started up again. Do you care to explain? I was lost. So many things were running through my mind at once. There was only one thing I could do, and I had to do it. But I knew I didn't like it. Going to the living room, make yourself make yourself comfortable. I'll be right back. I'll be done right down with her. I didn't allow a response. I turned around and walked up to the stairs slowly. Dad? Yeah, Dashie, I'm coming up. We I looked back down to the group of ponies as they watched me ascend. We need to talk. So that's what I did. I told her who was down there and that they were here to take her back. She had seen the cartoon never so often after some time and found the wacky adventures entertaining. She had given up any thought that, she was the, that the Rainbow Dash in the cartoon was, was her and only viewed it as, an, as another cartoon. As I talked to her and explained that those very ponies she didn't believe in were downstairs, she brushed me off with some laughs. She didn't believe me and thought I was playing some joke on her. So I looked, I took her down into the living room. Dashy! Pinky shouted, jumping on her cyan friend. Dashy was quick to shut the pinky, the pink pony off. Hey, get away from me! She was taken back by the sudden amount of the ponies filling their living room. They all looked at her with worried expressions on, as to why she shoved her closest friend away. Pinky's cotton candy mane went straight as she looked in confusion. You don't recognize me, do you? No, or any of you, Dashie continued. It hurt me in so many ways. I knew these were her friends, but so many things ha happened differently that she didn't know the truth fully, and neither did they, so I had to explain to them. I... I started. Dashie, take a seat, please, so I could talk to them. She just, she did just that, in a recliner. The, the entire time she looked at all the ponies who occupied the couches and sent a rug in the front of the fireplace. It was time, but first I had to start with a question. How long ago was she when she sent over here? The question caught them off guard, but Twilight cleared her throat as she spoke. About 15 days ago. Why? I was speechless. 15 days ago? Shit, she's been here with, with me for 15 years. That means a day in their world being meant a year here. Well, I continued, it's been a lot more time than that here. How long? Twilight asked. Fifteen years. All the ponies besides Celestia had their mouths agape. That doesn't explain why she doesn't know us, Applejack said. Well, that's the thing. When I found her, she was just a filly. Come again? From my math, I think she was no older than four or five years old. Now Celestia looks surprised. You mean to tell us you've been taking care of Rainbow Dash for 15 years since she was a small filly? She asked. I simply nodded and looked over to Dashie who wore an expressionless look on her face. We... She is... I started, but I couldn't hold back my tears any longer. I know it's not true. God, I wish it was, but... I understand the dad makes sense now. Celestia cut me off, holding a stern look on her face. She was thinking, trying to place together in her mind what possibly happened. I chalked up to magic, being unstable to possibly return her in age. For a few months, it was quiet, besides the breathing of seven ponies and myself. Finally, it was Dashie who broke the silence. So, what's supposed to happen now? 
I like the princess trying to read her face. No matter how good I have gotten at, at reading Dashie's face, Princess Celestia had the best poker face I've ever seen. I had no clue what she was thinking or feeling at this moment. Well, it's quite simple. Twilight? Celestia looked at her pupil, who instantly perked up, up here from her name. Do you still remember that memory spell from the Discord incident? Twilight simply nodded as she stood from the couch and hopped on the floor. I knew what was going on, what Celestia had in mind. She wanted Twilight to either erase Dashie's memories and start from anew, or possibly, I hope she just wanted to simply give Dashie her memories of her friendships in time in Ponyville. I wasn't sure what to do, or... Or it felt I was right. It was right. I knew it was right, and needed to be done. I had been telling myself for that for 15 years as I waited for this moment. But there was something I needed to say before it happened. These points were going to take my dashi, my dashi away, and I had some words to speak before that could happen. No, wait, please. I started. Toyot stopped and looked at the sun goddess. Just give me a moment of her, please. All I ask, since since this is the last time we'll see each other. I had given up holding back my tears, and at this point was openly crying. The ponies could tell I was hurting, and Dashie didn't look, look to be faring well too well either, so figuring it wasn't too good to prolong the inevitable, I walked over to the chair, Dashie sat in, knelt down, and meet to meet her eye level as I spoke. Dashie. My little Dashie. I love you with all my heart. You have done wonders to open me up from the man I once was. You... You, I, I, had, I had paused a moment to settle down. You have brought me so much joy into my life that I can possibly ever, I, I can't possibly ever thank you for. At this point, Dashi B had too had begun to cry. That only made, made it worse for me. These fifteen years we have had together, talking, playing, flying, all those have been so special to me. <laughs> I just want you to know that I will forever love you. It doesn't matter if we are biologically related or in different worlds. I don't care what you th may ever think of me or if you ever remember me. But right now, you be my dashi. I want you. I poked her on the chest to physically show I was talking to her to know that fact. If there is ever a problem that happens if you need me, don't hesitate to find a way to get me, okay? I tried to laugh, passing the last part as a joke. It worked, only slightly, as we both continued to cry. <clears throat> I could also hear some sniffing behind me. I can only picture Pinkie Pie crying, much like she had at the end of the second episode in Season 1, after Celestia and Luna had been reunited. Do, do, do I have to, to, to go to, to Daddy? It had been a few years since she actually called me Daddy. Most of the time, it was simply Dad or Pops. It felt good knowing that she still cared for me to call me Daddy. Much like the first time she had said to me so many years ago. I simply nodded my head as I stood up. Before I could fully grasp my balance, she jumped up onto me and hugged me tight. I could feel her tears on the back of my neck and I returned the embrace. It's your actual home, Dashie. You don't belong here. You need to go back where you belong. <laughs> I belong here with you. It hurts so much to say, but I had to keep her convinced that this was the right thing to do. No, you don't. You are limited here, only able to fly around the house. You have no friends or other ponies to relate to. I was only taking care of you until this time would come. But I never thought it would be this painful. It, remind, it, re it remained quiet for a few more, more minutes as we held each other tight. She didn't fight back or want to resist what's happening, which told me that she knew as well what must be done. <laughs> I love you, Daddy. And I love you too, my little Dashie. We separated as she lowered herself to the ground. At this point, all the other points were tears flowing, even the goddess herself. She seemed quite smug about knowing what happened. The time difference and such, but it was evident that the age difference was a shock. She most likely expected to see a 35-year-old Rainbow Dash, but instead found my 20-year-old Dashy. Twilight stepped closer to the Rainbow Dash, sniffling once before her horn, her, her horn glowed. I knew it was coming. It hurt so much. But I knew it was right. 
it would have it was what had to happen for her, for her friends, and I twisted away for me. Now I could know she was actually going home and would be around for her friends and could fly wherever and whenever she wanted to, without any limitations, she could enjoy her friend's company once more. Wait! I looked from the floor to Dashi as she backed away from Twilight. Before I go, I want to get something. Before any pony or myself could protest, she flew up to her room. She was quick and returned with a shoebox and her front hooves. I wasn't sure if she would be allowed to take anything back with her and have to the princess to protest, but she remained quiet, allowing Dashi to quickly write down something on a piece of paper and sit it on the coffee table. She looked at me, back at me, still crying with a smile on her face. I knew she had realized this is how much how mu this was how much must end. And knew and and knew I knew that, that as well. The box, from my guessing, was probably her most cherished items that she kept for she had to leave. Though it hurt me to think about it, I hope she had a picture of us. Then again, I also hope not, for she was forced to remember me in a world away. And that hurt just as much as everything else. I'm so sorry, Rainbow Dash, Twilight started. I, I honestly wish there was no way to do this. I wish I didn't have to do this, but can't, Dash, he started. Can't he come with me? The suffering in her, the, su the su stuttering in her voice told me she was simply speaking her mind, not actually asking the question. Twilight shook her head, unable to keep eye contact with her friend as she cried before her. Rainbow Dash, Princess Lustia started. He cannot join you in our world, much like how you cannot stay in his. This was all never meant to be, and the world around us was not made to house you. And yet, Celestia looked to me, smiling, and then began to look around our living room. As the photos of us together and and her, and her all her knickknacks and belongings strewn around the room. And yet something beautiful happened here. Something I cannot just explain in full. When I realized where you ended up, I expected the worst. I figured you to be ruined, tamed, and tarnished from this world's cruelty. But now I see what this quite is the op quite the opposite. That here, this man that has raised you shows me that you have worn good hooves, or hands as it were. Stashy sniffed once, beginning to calm down as Celestia's words snuck in. Celestia then returned to look at me, still smiling. I cannot speak for you, but from what I see in front of me, the amount of love you both share and have shared together tells me that you have raised her as if she, were, as she was your own, even with the obvious differences. You still raised her if unbased as her species. Her origins, you raised her as if you were if she, her as your daughter, which only makes the entire ordeal so much worse. I absorbed her words, as as well as the other ponies in the room. So I must say to you, dear sir, please do not hold any any of my hold my student accountable for this. It was never her or any other pony's intention to cause as much hurt to either of you. If you must blame some pony, I would ask you to blame me. I am the one that helped bring them here, to take Rainbow Dash back to her home, away from here. I just couldn't look at any of them, my heavy breathing breaking down with sobs. My mind was just going on her own, thinking back of all the things Dashy and I did took together. I took a deep breath as I spoke. How could I blame some pony for sending Rainbow Dash here? I sniffed, then cleared my throat as I continued. I nearly choked up as I searched for the urge to trip myself. These have been the best 15 years of my life, so if anything, I feel like quite the opposite. I wish to thank you, Twilight, and the rest of you, thank you for what you did, though not intentional. Thank you for all that came out of this. And finally, thank you for all my for all my years of my life and my love with Dashi. I tried to smile at Twilight between the sobs, but she looked on the edge of tears herself and could only look away before she cried herself. Celestia then stood from a rug she laid on and walked over to me as I stood. No need for thanks, good sir. Instead, I wish to thank you for taking care of one of my little ponies. She would, she would have never made it without someone much like yourself. Celestia closed her eyes and then leaned her torn horn towards me. I didn't move. I wasn't sure what she was, do what she was going on, and as she touched her horn up to my head. I felt a sudden warmth rushing my, th rushing my th through my body. She drew her horn away, still smelling as she stepped back. Thank you. Then her pony, pony spoke up. Thank you, sir. 
Toy added, my able to speak through, speak through, through her tears. Thank you, Applejack said. Thank you, darling, for caring for our Rainbow Dash. We already spoke. Um, th thank you, Fluttershy quietly said. Thanks, Pinky shouted as she sprinted up to me and hugged me. I couldn't help but laugh a little from her external attitude. Better yet, the rumors on the internet were true. Her mane did smell like cotton candy. I remained silent as I nodded. Then looked back to Dashi, who also wore a smile on her face. The ponies all returned to Dashi as Twilight's horn began to glow once more. I rained on Mint Rainbow, Twilight asked again, returning to Dashi and started her, her, and started her magic. She simply nodded as she closed her eyes and waved in the inedible. It seemed time slowed down as Twilight's horn approached Dashi's forehead. My mind began forcing random memories of, of us together. I could visibly remember the splashing of, her, of the bathtub from her bath times before she showered herself. I can still taste our many filled with tons of baking and cooking in general. I can still smell the outdoors of our times at the park where she was able to spread her wings. There were so many memories that I simply had to shut off my brain so that I could keep myself focused on Dashi. A single tear rained down her left cheek as I could see her eyes moving down under her lids. Her mind was doing the same thing mine was, forcing our fondest memories all at once. For this would be the last time we ever saw one another. Finally, Twilight's horn touched Dashi's forehead. There was a bright light, and when I could see again, they were all gone. All the ponies had disappeared. Through my tears, I sighed in relief. It felt wrong, but it also felt right. She was now the normal Rainbow, Rainbow Dash that belonged in Ponyville. I stood in the living room for several more minutes, just staring blankly at the empty floor that Dashi had been standing at just moments before. Then, I looked around the room and took notice of my surroundings. I noticed things were different. Pictures that once held images of me and Dashi no longer hung from the walls. Many of the random personal things of her scattered around the living room were gone as well. I was confused, so I ran up, up to her bedroom to look. When I opened the door, what I saw instead of her NASCAR and air show posters mixed up with her bed and other furnishes was a simple office, a cheap desk with a computer on it and an ugly looking, looking potted plant. It took me some time to digest what I was experiencing before I realized what must have happened. It made sense, but it still stunned me in my chest. To make sure nothing happened between worlds, Celestia must have removed any existence to Dashi ever being here, being with me. Fifteen years, all down the drain as their, as their existence was wiped from the planet. I felt as though all those years were for naught, were, were for naught. Wasted, as I wouldn't be, weren't able to remember her. And yet, my memories still lingered of her. I could remember everything as if it were still as vivid as it really happened. Though the thought clicked, she did something with her magic when she touched me with her horn. Did, did she protect my memories so that I would remember her? Had she done the same for Dashi? I walked back downstairs and into the living room where I, well, I thought. On the coffee table, I sat a book. I recognized it. It was my full album. I sat down on my couch, opened it to the first book on the first page. There was my mother and father with, my, with me shortly after, after I was born. I continued to flip through, through them, looking at my own past. There was a gap after my parents died, but to keep my mother's dream going, in, in, I, I had picked it up making false pictures of happy times and enjoying my life to stick her books and memories. Then, I opened up a piece of paper. I picked it up and immediately recognized the hand drawing, or more currently, mouth writing. I expected this was, this was, what, this was what she had written before she left. Dad, for 15 years you took, you took care of me. For 15 years you loved me, played with me, and made sure I enjoyed my life in a world not meant to house me. I'm not a mayor of many words, but even though I told you this in person, I felt like you needed a written version of this it's so you would know it was all real. I love you, Daddy. You helped me shape me into the mayor I am now. I'm not sure what's going to happen, if I remember any of this or not, but I want you to know that you did a darn good job of raising, of raising me, even though I was a bit stubborn at times and short with you at other, during others. With Celeste's permission, with Celestia's permission, I hope to allow you to keep our photos, our memories, with you so that you'll never forget. Again, I love you and thank you. Your little Dar always. Your little Dashy forever. Rainbow Dash. I set the note back into the page, flattening it with my hand as I felt 
the dried tear marks littering the paper. I read the note over and over and over again until I had it memorized. Then I turned the page and was greeted with Dashie's Philly smile. So now I sit here, looking through my photo album as our time together. Her first bath, her first words, her first drawing, even her first preen feather. All of this, all in this book of memories. Everything else in the house is gone, but what I put into this book still remains. I don't dare ever change that either, but I'll continue to add to it, to show that these years will help her not only shape herself, but help shape me as well. I am now a new man for what I was 15 years ago. Changed. Giving another chance by a sheer miracle of fortune and events that I inspired from somewhere I can't even speculate. If I'd, ever, if I'd never gone back and checked that box, if I'd done something different than I had, could have changed everything between us. I guess I'm lucky that it all worked out. I can gladly say that I've achieved my parents' only wish for me to be happy. Though I am saddened, I'm still happy for the time I had with her. I now sit alone in this empty house, staring at my mother's rainbow picture with a smile plastered on my face. Every time I think of it, I see it, I think of Dashi. I should be crying. I should feel horrible and want nothing but my daughter back. And yet, I feel ready to know that everything is alright. She didn't run away or leave on bad terms. She has gone home to where she belongs and is safe. I look back down to my photo album, turning to the page after my most recent photo. The pages are blank. I still have a lot of life ahead of me, and I plan to make the best of it. For myself. For my little Dashi. The end. I hope you enjoyed this reading of My Little Dashi by, by Rob Kicker 53 read by Benjamin Studios. I hope you enjoyed my 5th anniversary video, and, uh, and as always, keep smiling, and take a look after My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. We all know it will live forever. Goodbye for now.